Hey folks, Scott, you're here. Sorry about that intro. I couldn't resist. Um, yeah, I just left work a little bit early. It was kind of cool. I came in like three hours late, left 10 minutes early. That's what my old friend Bill said. If you come in late, you better be leaving early. So now I'm leaving early. I'm on my way to go see a 445 show of The Last Exorcism, which I know absolutely nothing about. I, uh, Look today to do some research and find out that I don't know anything about any of the cast. The writers have never heard of them. The director, some guy named Danny Daniel Stam, uh, he's born in Germany. He made one other movie called A Necessary Death, which is supposed to be really, really good, gets great reviews. Which that one's about a uh, filmmaker who puts an ad out on the internet looking for someone who's gonna commit suicide so he can follow them from basically from the decision to do that all the way up until the end and uh, I guess it's actually a movie that really uh, makes you think and doesn't come down on one side or the other of like the whole like euthanasia debate or I don't even know if it's about euthanasia I don't know I'm assuming it was but it could just be about suicide I don't know anyway looked for that and couldn't find it I would have liked to have seen that before I saw this but oh well um, so yeah, I don't know anything about it. I know that some people like this movie. Um, I saw a creator post that it was good, and so did uh, Jess. Um, not Jess, Justin. Sorry, um, I fucked that up. So uh, yeah, so did Justin. He posted that he liked it, and uh, I've got this app on my phone called Fandango where you can actually look up a movie and see what people are tweeting about it. I don't really use Twitter, but. I saw like all of the negative reviews were from big meathead idiots who I would absolutely hate in life who said that it was as stupid as the Blair Witch and uh, somebody else was talking about how Rob Zombie's like Halloween movies are better and all this and I'm like well that's definitely a good sign that maybe I'm in for one of those rare treats so hopefully it's good if not you know, what's the worst that can happen? I got to get out of work early, and I'm going to eat some popcorn, so. Riding solo today, though. There's no one here, sadly. Nobody wanted to go. I don't really have any friends. So. Oh, well. You'll be my friend, won't you? Friend me. Over here, so I know that you're my friend. And, uh, that's about it. I don't know anything about this movie, so, uh, I've got nothing to talk about. So I'll see you on the other side. Bye. Hey everybody, I just finished watching it. Um, I don't know, it's kind of funny. I'm gonna do this right away without uh, any time to let it sit in, but um, I liked it actually. I think um, I'm not gonna say it was great, but I really enjoyed it. The, um, oh, it was really well done. I, it's, I'm not going to give anything away. I think that um, the uh, marketing campaign on this movie is so far off from what this movie actually is. Um, like this thing doesn't really even turn into a horror movie for... Uh, um, God, I don't know. Like The first three quarters of the movie is barely even a horror movie. And then uh, it definitely goes there, but it takes quite a while to get there. Um, lots of character development, which is always a good thing. Um, I know fans of, uh, I don't know what, I guess I'll call first person horror, like uh, Paranormal Activity, Blair Witch. I definitely should check this flick out. Um, I don't think that it's a rip off of those, I think that's just sort of like a new subgenre experience things first person. This music's getting scary. Um, definitely enjoyed it. It doesn't have any kind of uh, Eli Roth feel to it at all, which is definitely good. 
no like over the top characters or annoying teenagers or anything like that. It's a real quiet movie. Hey folks, Scott you're here. I'm on my way home from seeing the last exorcism. I uh, had to switch and take my old truck with the muffler problem. So hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I can use some of this footage. But uh, I actually enjoyed The Last Exorcism. I went into it not knowing anything about it. And uh, not wanting to know anything about it, truthfully. I like to I like to go see a movie blind and just you know let it play on me without having to see every trailer. I don't even know... I've seen trailers on TV, but I didn't actually pay attention to them. I did pay attention enough to know that I think they showed, like, pictures of, like, contortionists dancing on the ceiling and shit like that, which isn't, is not. I gotta wait till I get here. <laughs> but, uh, that does, never happens in the movie. There's no, like, upside down walking on ceilings and all that kind of shit that I think they show on the posters and stuff. Whoever came up with the marketing campaign for this should be ashamed. Um, all they do is end up disappointing the people that like that kind of contemporary nonsense and alienating the people that would actually enjoy this movie, which are fans of like, you know, kind of quiet, understated horror movies that, you know, I think it's the kind of thing where I'm not sure. Either it's going to go in one ear and out the other and it, I'm not going to think about it or it's the kind of movie where you know, a couple days later I'll still be thinking about some stuff in the movie. You know, obviously I just walked out of this so I don't know how that's going to play out. But if you like that kind of movie where, you know, you just kind of go in and let it take you, creates its own reality. It's basically like without too many spoilers, it's sort of like a snake oil salesman ends up finding somebody that has use for some snake oil. And, uh, that's pretty That's pretty much the movie right there. So, that may even be giving too much away, but if you're a fan of uh, first person horror like uh, Paranormal Activity, Blair Witch Project you know, I'm not going to compare it to those movies and say which is better or what, but it definitely is in that subgenre of movies now that we have now where it's all first person um, Cloverfield is another one but if you're a fan of that kind of thing where it kind of you know you get submersed into the story that way then uh, definitely check this out I don't think you know I don't think they overuse the gimmick I just think it's you know it's that's a new type of movie that we're gonna have forever now um, which definitely is better than 3d in my opinion, you know, I mean, this way you at least have to keep writing and come up with something because you can't just rely on a camera pointing at, you know, what you've got going on. That's just not going to cut it. Whereas 3D, a lot of these movies just don't hold up without the 3D. So, um, but yeah, definitely go see this movie if you, uh, you know, if you've already seen Piranha 3D. Because there's not a whole lot else coming out. There's that devil thing that looks horrible. Um, other than that, not a whole lot going on. So, but yeah, I would recommend seeing this movie. Like I said, it's a good movie. I don't think it's great. Like, I don't think... You know, I'm not sitting here waiting to go buy the Blu-ray or anything. Um, and that's kind of where I judge a movie as being great. Is when I walk out of the theater and I can't wait to own it. This movie um, doesn't really fall in that category for me. I don't really think I need to see it again, but I did enjoy seeing it. So take that for what it's worth, and uh, I do recommend you check it out. So until next time, this is Rob signing off. We'll see you.